access level has recently increased. Excellent. Incoming message. Good evening and welcome to episode 22 of Behind the Scanner. Your hosts for tonight are Andrew Krug from Virginia, Daphne D. from Washington, D.C., and Jorge Pedrero from Mexico City. Our special guests tonight are Dark G and Gustavo Rivera. The Q&A tool is enabled for tonight's broadcast. Submit your questions throughout the show and we'll ask as many as time allows. If you know someone who would make a great guest, submit their information to us at bit.ly slash bts underscore guest. Finally, you can watch past episodes and subscribe to our channel at youtube.com slash behind the scanner. And now, your hosts of Behind the Scanner. Good evening, agents. Welcome to episode 22 of Behind the Scanner. Let's get the show started and coming us from the land of musical cheese with onions and vinegar. Please welcome Dark G. Hey, welcome everybody. <laughs> Love the background and the lights. You really went all out. I'm, I'm impressed. Beautiful with it. stuff. Beautiful. <laughs> <Yeah>. uh, <laughs> Not that beautiful, but okay. <laughs> <laughs> You're not all about location, eh? <laughs> well, thank you for joining us. I know it's uh, pretty early over over there in Germany right now. Um, before we get started, I actually want to tell a little story and clarify what that little intro was about. The musical cheese and onions and vinegar. You know, when I was over in Germany, I got a, I got a chance to meet this guy, Dark, and... He took me on this fantastic tour of downtown Frankfurt, and at the end of it, he said, hey, you've got to try this this dish. It's a local delicacy. Everybody everybody eats it. It's really, really good. And you have to remind me, it was like rotten, rotten – it was, it was cheese made out of rotten milk with onions and vinegar and something else. And there's a reason why they call it musical cheese, and – and my ride back really appreciated it, so thank you for that. Oh, yeah, my, my. Oh, my God. That's disgusting. <laughs> no, actually, it's very, very good stuff. Yeah. Mm. It was. It wasn't bad. It tasted great. It. It. Yeah. We'll just leave it at that. But and also, to highlight Ingress as like a, a social thing, you know, you you get mad mad props, man. I was over in Germany and I didn't have a uh, guardian badge at all. And you offered to recharge a portal for me in the middle of, like, the Bavarian forest for 90 days. And unfortunately, I think it got taken down at, like, day 72-ish or something like that. But for over two and a half months, this guy recharged it every single day from Germany for me. So thank you for that as well. It just goes to prove that this is really a social game and social interaction. So, um, yeah, so it is indeed. It is. <laughs> Just a trip down memory lane, and I, I really appreciate it, and and you know how global the game is, and the friendships that you make. So thank you for coming on. And I will I will let Daphne take it away from this point. All right. Well, that's um, I mean it's a pretty cool story that highlights the important social aspect of ingress. And well, having played since November of 2012. Um, does the game still have a heavy social influence for you, or have you resorted to being a lone wolf? No, actually, actually, uh, when, I, when I started playing Inkers, I was a lone wolf, because there were only a very low number of players. Actually, I think we were maybe five players around 100 kilometers, uh, so I, I had to play as a lone wolf, and... Uh, as soon as more players joined the community, or actually the game, there was no community at those days, so more players joined the game, uh, it, it growed, and then we had uh, more contact, and we get together and met, and we had uh, some fun together. But at first, I really was 
walking out uh, after work in my business dress in the snow through the forest to to uh, claim some portals and uh, well it was really a nice experience at the beginning yeah, <laughs> yeah. well um as one of the early players, you co-founded the Enlightened community in Germany. How were you able to grow your community and still keep everyone happy and together? Oh, well, I never could keep anyone happy. <laughs> it was uh, actually... Uh, so uh, first, there was no Google community. So when, when Ingress started, there was only uh, Google+, Plus, but no Google+, Plus communities. They, just did not exist. So we had an online bulletin board system where we uh, tried to organize some stuff, but actually it never went very well. And as soon as communities in Google Plus started, it really gave a big push to uh, communicating with all other agents. And uh, so I, I, I really do not know how it came, but uh, we just started doing it and uh, Soon, some some other people came in and said, "Hey, this is great, and uh, let us do something." And so, ah, it was really, how shall I say it? Um, a very great experience. Yeah. Did you guys like like most people? Did you jump on the uh, Google Plus communities like the day they were released, or did you kind of wait and see what these things were? No, I, I actually, actually, uh, we jumped on it uh, as soon as it was uh, going live. So I don't know. Maybe there were a few days, but uh, we know uh, we we were uh, well, Google communities were announced, and then we thought, hey, cool, let's do this. Yeah, that, I mean, it's it was a huge tool to really galvanize people a little bit better than message boards, and we were using. It. IRC chats and some of the other stuff, um, but being part of a community organizer, you know, is answering the call when anomalies, or artifacts, or shards, or connected cells, or I could go on and on and on, you know, come knocking at your door. Uh, to what extent have you been involved with these types of almost uh, non-everyday events? Uh, well, uh, at first I did not participate at uh, so stuff at all, so. It just it changed when when I first met some some international player actually from Germany, <laughs> uh, Jorge Stefan maybe you know his uh, El Toro, oh, yeah. and he he came down to Frankfurt because his, uh, his spouse was attending to some concert or something and and he just spent the night with us and I organized some people and we just uh, run through a neighborhood city and uh, had some fun and and. Then I realized uh, that there is some more than just doing some local stuff. There, the, there is some global or some some European events we need to take part in, and yeah. So I don't know. Then I, then I became more organized and uh, started to uh, contact uh, Anne Beutenmüller, for example, which is our German uh, contact point for Ingress. And so I don't know. It just went its way. Hey. Well, so how many anomaly events have you participated in, and well, do you have a favorite? Ah, uh, good question. Actually, first one here in Germany, I think it was Cassandra anomaly, but I'm not quite sure honestly. But uh, I did not have any chance to join it. So the, my first one was in Berlin uh, recursion, and it was a really huge event. I mean, there were. 1,500 people or 2,000 people, agents of both sections, wow. and so it was really huge, and, and we had lots of fun walking around the city. Actually, we did not see much of the city, but anyway, it was lots of fun, and so then second second anomaly I joined was uh, actually, uh, I must call my my own anomaly, but, but I, I hosted it, and here in Frankfurt, uh, we had the recursion anomaly, and this was actually more stress than fun because as organizer you have so much work it's really uh, crazy. Yeah, so I, I'm looking forward to this weekend in Munich where we have the Helios anomaly and yeah. it will be fun again as I'm just a common agent on the field. Well, um, <clears throat> before we continue, uh, we remind you that we have enabled the Q&A question. So, uh, Q&A uh, 
toolbar, tool, <laughs> sorry, uh, to so you if you want to to set up some question for our guests, please please do it. We are waiting for that. And well, Darji, uh, can you uh, talk a little bit about what Run for Badges was? Yeah, actually, when the badges uh, were brought to life in Ingress, many players who already retired their agent life uh, came back and uh, said, hey, cool, we have some new goal to go for, because before you were level 8, and then you said, hmm, painting portal green, next day it's blue, so you painted green again, it was boring. Uh, and, and then with his badges, uh, his agent had their own goal to achieve, and it was really a push. Yeah. Okay. So how many badges do you have right now? <laughs> how many, actually? <laughs> you, you uh, have I, I, are they all black? Ah, uh, no, not at all. Actually, I, I, I'm quite a lazy player, actually. <laughs> so I, I just play on, on my uh, way to work and, and back, back from work. So, I mean, at, at the beginning, when I started Ingress, I, I drove 60 kilometers after work just to, to reach a few portals because there were not many more portals. But nowadays, you have thousands of portals. And so, uh, actually, I just do what I need to do. And so, I, I advance uh, very slow. Yeah, I'm kind of in that same boat. I play next to Daphne, and she's like level 20, and I'm just a level 11. So, noobs. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> well, as a as a person who's I've actually met you and hung out with you, and, and I know um, your dark G personality as well as your real life alter ego. Yeah, you know, how do you balance your private life versus your ingress life? Actually, um, poof. <laughs> uh, it's it's not that easy to answer. Actually, though, I mean. At, at first, uh, I had my business life, and, and after business, I, I switched into the role of Dark G. And meanwhile, meanwhile, I have my business life and my my private life. And some days there is no interest at all. No, actually, sorry, some evenings there is no interest at all. But every day there is some some agent work to do, some organizing stuff, which uh, requires some daily time. So, uh, I think I can manage it quite well, but sometimes it's difficult. So if there's one thing that you could change about the game, including the scanner app, uh, what would it be? Uh, actually, I'm quite a fan of those uh, 80s design, which was there in the first. So uh, when, when, when I started Ingress, it was very basic. There was no such fancy animations and uh, bubbles going over the screen and stuff, and so I, I, re I really liked it. So, so and and also it was uh, better for the battery. So I, <laughs> I mean, all those 3D animations they they take real uh, stress on the graphic chipset, and I I think we could go back a little bit to the basic design, but uh, I doubt it will happen. Okay, so uh, what makes you walk to the green light and choose your faction? <laughs> ah, yeah, my faction. Hmm. Actually, when I, when I first started, I, I, it was a hard decision, actually. So as I'm a little bit fan of the 80s and the 80s movies, I, I just immediately thought of our John Carpenter's uh, They Live. Maybe you know it. Um, where where he can see through his sunglasses and he sees those aliens and stuff and uh, so I thought okay there may be resistance but then then I made up my mind and I, I think my my personal my personal way of life is more of the enlightenment so I'm I'm really open for new stuff and I I think we need to advance in our human nature so our, our mind uh, is. Really, uh, it should go forward and not not stop and and block any uh, new uh, stuff. Okay. Okay. Now, do you have? Sorry, just kind of going more on the personal side. Now, do you have a favorite food or meal that you like to eat after playing, besides the musical cheese? <laughs> 
<laughs> Actually, if you eat if if you eat musical cheese, you cannot hold your cell phone because it's very it's very greasy. <laughs> so, but uh, um, usually during 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 our tours or our farm events, we we fancy some kebab. Hmm. What what was that? Kebab. You have to make mm-hmm. it up. Yeah. This, 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 this yeah, okay, Turkish stuff. Oh, okay. All oh, right. Oh, yeah. Oh, that does actually sound pretty good. <laughs> I was thinking it was something more exotic than a kebab. Okay. <laughs> Do you, well, let me ask you this question as a follow-up because, because I know the answer. Do you have a enlightened base or a place that you'd like to go and, and meet up and eat at? <laughs> yeah, yeah actually... <laughs> <laughs> uh, actually, we have we have our our um, say, a pub a pub where we go each month and where we gather and we have uh, two portals there which we will bring up with uh, heatsink and multi hex at maximum so we have some fun there. But uh, privately, in the evening when I walk with my dog, I have some nearby pub where I sit down for half an hour and uh, have a beer and. There's also, of course, a portal. <laughs> <laughs> of course. Yeah, yeah. It's it, it's a lifestyle, as people say. Are you um are you willing to to wade into the the pool that is the viewer questions? Yeah, of course. Come on. All right. So we've we've got uh, we've got two so far. The first one is, and I think you may have just answered it, but maybe not. Do you have any favorite portals? Where are they, and what are they? <laughs> Favorite portals? Whew. Actually, honestly, no. Um, I mean, I, of course, I have I have some portal at work, of course, which which is quite nice when I go to lunch and I can hack it a few times. And I have my portal at my pub and uh, some portals in my neighborhood, uh, which are actually all uh, submitted by me. So I'm I'm quite proud of it, but. Uh, <laughs> there is no favorite portal I would I would fancy. I would say, hey, if you attack, attack this portal, I will kill you or something. No, there's no such <laughs> thing. <laughs> Nothing that you want to admit to live on the air. I understand. It's okay. You you, you can keep it yeah. yourself. That's fair. That's fair. Is there a um, musical cheese portal? Yes. Yeah. Actually... <laughs> Hold your nose. No. Eating it was no, delicious. No, 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 I gotta say, it was it was really good. So anyway. All right. How um, the second question is? Let's see. How far have you traveled to play Ingress? Uh, just just for playing Ingress, um, I would say Frankfurt to Berlin, which is uh, six hundred kilometer, is uh, most far distance. But uh, if you count the daily uh, daily stuff which you do, and and if you accumulate it, and I don't know, you, it's uh, thousands of kilometers. <laughs> <laughs> what? How about how about what's the furthest you've played Ingress that maybe you haven't? You traveled obviously to Berlin to play Ingress, but have you traveled other places and just played Ingress there? Maybe you went somewhere for work I, or? Yeah, yeah. Of of course, everywhere I go, I play Ingress. So yeah. if you count that, then it would be France. Yeah. So yeah. France is just a neighborhood country, so it's not that far away, but. Um, and actually, all, all my long-time portal or guardian portal candidates are already killed, so... Uh... <laughs> <laughs> That's good to know. All right, well, so we're doing something new this week. Um, instead of our traditional panel discussion, so Dark G, we want to give you a minute right now to talk about something we may not have covered so far. Um, are there any last-minute topics you'd like to discuss or bring up? The floor is yours. You've got... 60 seconds. Ah, thank you very much, Daphne. Actually, um, I would like to address this to all players who are out there and who may listen to the show. And please, just if you play Ingress, stay calm and be human. Yeah. So I, I, as a community leader, I always get some reports about agents who cannot behave themselves. So, so, and it's really disgusting, actually, to read about this stuff. And so I really would like to say, please, people, play this game, but play friendly and uh, stay calm. And if, if there's anything or any, any trouble, just go away. And, and so just please be 
peaceful and remain calm. Yeah, just, but, just but, treat people how you would want them to treat you, basically, right? Yeah, actually, actually, every agent should be treated uh, in in a human human way. So that, but sometimes there are really uh, strange reports, and then some people would, would tell, "Hey, I will kill you with the eggs and go away from my bottle." And so I think, "Hey, this is crazy guy. This is not unbelievable." Yeah. Yeah. yeah good, good message. Well, yeah, it really is. Thank you for sharing that. Yeah, you're and, welcome. And thanks for staying up late with us and agreeing to come on our show. Um, we will let you go so you can catch up on some sleep before you have to work in the morning. Yeah, thank you very much. Yeah. I'm good. <laughs> thanks, thanks for coming on. Appreciate it. Thanks. Bye bye. Bye bye. Well, and now directly from the country where time really matters and brands like Swatch, Omega, and Rolex are proof of this. Let's welcome Gustavo Guevara, a.k.a. Agent Kedash. Hi, y'all. Hello. Hi. Also, a very late night, maybe early morning for you as well. So. Yes, it's, it's the same time as Stavji. Yeah, 3, yeah. 321. <laughs> wow. We appreciate you coming on. So let's uh let's get right down to it. As as Jorge mentioned, you are from Switzerland, but you have a a really Latin American name and, and look to you. So is there? What, well, what's the what's what's the story? I'm not from Switzerland. I live in Switzerland uh, since uh, 2009. But actually, I'm from Colombia, uh, and then five years ago or something so, uh, I knew a woman, and then <laughs> I married her, and she she's uh, from Switzerland, and then yes, here I am. There's always like it was a very very tough decision. <laughs> Uh, it's right. yeah. always a woman. Sorry. I was saying Jorge is correct. It's always about a woman. Yes, it's always about a woman. <laughs> <laughs> right on. Um, so uh, from our research, you come across as someone who's really, really into video games. Uh, which ones are you currently playing when you're not in the mood to chase XM <laughs> and capture portals in your city? Uh, that's a really difficult question. Because I play a lot of games <laughs> at the moment. I play a little Destiny on Play 4, on PlayStation 4, uh, FIFA 15, uh, Tales of Celia 2 on the PlayStation 3. I'm replaying Chrono, Cro uh, Chrono Trigger, and uh, I'm playing Professor Layton. And today I became the the alpha invitation for Enclave. <laughs> then yes, <laughs> wow. oh <my> it's <laughs> really wow. tough. I would have stopped at Destiny. I'm 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 afraid to pick that game up. I don't know how you could do all the other ones on top. Of hey, yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I I just love to play games, and then yes. There, there's always time if you love it. Yeah. Yes. Forget sleep. And for one time, it's not about a woman. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I guess it is, but uh, in a, in a, in an, another way, and, and I, 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 I bet you she has to play also, or you have a lot of trouble with her because yes. <laughs> Yes. Yeah. So well. Um, okay, Gustavo. Um, there, the, there's. Uh, you make no secret that you are going through a rough time in life. One of the more challenging things you are dealing with is going through uh, the process of a, a divorce. Yes. Um, how was plain English being helpful for you to overcome this, this situation? Uh, well, it was uh, really, really hard at the start. That was uh, one year ago, 
about one year ago. Uh, I played already Ingress, but uh, uh, it was a really hard time on my life. And then I could uh, start with Ingress, traveling, traveling on the country, not not on the city. A little bit uh, mountains, uh, alone to think, to walk, and then I knew really, really cool people because uh, all the friends went uh, with my uh, ex-wife. Then I had a friend uh, or something so, and uh, with. Uh, with Ingress, uh, I had not much friends, but uh, but really, really important people around me. Then, yes, also Ingress helped me a lot with uh, with that time, and uh, it's uh, it's uh, it's not already done, but uh, yes, it's better. Cool. Yeah, there is. I, I've been through that myself. I mean, there is light, and uh, but I, do you find that being public about it is very helpful or healing for you? Mm, it's not about uh, being public, but uh, you. Uh, as I was married, uh, I was strong for two. For me and for my ex-wife, and then it went all wrong, and I couldn't I couldn't hold myself anymore. Mm -hmm. And then I must accept that I w I could be sad, I could be uh, angry, I could uh, had some feelings, and. I didn't need to be to be all the time strong or something. So it's not about to be public, but to accept who you are, to accept uh, what what you feel at the moment, and to express that. Wow! Yes. Yeah. That's, yeah. Yeah, that's beautiful. Yes. And it's important to have people around you that accept you for who you are too, which. You know, ingress is something that allows you to interact and bond with people that you may have never met before, and you have that commonality. Just just like with Dark and myself, I haven't seen him in six months, and I only saw him you know one time, and, and it feels like it was just yesterday. We just picked up where we left off. So the social aspect of Ingress is, is really important, and it seems to be very important for you as well. And, and you mentioned to us before the show how you have been uh, saved by some fellow resistance members. Can you elaborate a little bit on, on what you meant by that? And is the support that you get from the community one of the reasons why you're so heavily involved with it? Uh, well, um, after all the divorce uh, start and so uh, I was uh, diagnosed uh, with a uh, heart depression, I'm on psychiatric therapy, and then I had uh, a couple of uh, suicide, uh, yeah, suicidal episodes. Uh, then uh, a couple, also couple of friends from from resistance uh, could combine me to go to to therapy, to think positive, to think there is there is light, uh, there is simmer, there is always a future, uh, it's not the end, we are here, uh, and uh, there are some people, on, they're not anymore uh, my fellow resistance or my comrades, but uh, there are as brothers and sisters, because uh, uh, they took care of me, they were there when I needed, and I think this that social aspect more as uh, okay now uh, on on this weekend we go and make a 
L8 farm and then 300 L8 portals. Yeah, that's cool. That's uh, that's part of the game. That's really really cool. But <clears throat> when when you really know the other people, when you really can interact with the other people and know who they are, then you discover some amazing people. And that's why I love. Uh, that's what I love from from communities, from hangouts, because it's not about okay, we make uh, the biggest felt on Europa. Okay, yes, we we make some hangouts <laughs> for those things, but it's uh, it's all about uh, okay. I like. I don't know uh, dogs. Uh, he likes cats, okay, there is a conversation, some interaction, okay, let's, uh, let's go drink a beer or something. So, And that's what, uh, what really makes Ingress uh, another kind of game because I could play Destiny all the day, maybe online with, uh, with headphones and then hear that uh, my mother is <laughs> only gaming. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's yeah. not a secret. Oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I can go out, meet people, and talk with real people, and take some interaction with real people. So real interactions. Yeah, that's, that's awesome, man. It really is. Um, so let's talk more about the game and change to a more humorous topic. Um, as Jorge mentioned in his introduction, your current code name is Kadaj, but yeah. you used to have another one. So what does Kadaj mean, and uh, why did you change from your old name? Okay, it's a really long story because I was enlightened. That's why I had another code name. Oh. I was Agent Gustav. Uh, that was at the beginning from Ingress, uh, about uh, January or February, uh, February uh, last year. Then I played as Enlightenment for about uh, six or seven months. Made three million APs and some badges, and then I didn't know. I really didn't uh, didn't feel so comfortable uh, at, uh, at the Enlightenment. Then I knew some people from Resistance, really cool people, really <laughs> awesome people. And then I took the name Kadash, also I deleted my, my old account. The plan was to abandon Ingress, but uh, somehow uh, a friend advised me, okay, why don't you come to to the resistance? And uh, then I took the name Kadash, and Kadash um, means uh, uncompleted. Hmm. And it is so because uh, how how to say that? Because uh, I was uh, part of the Enlightenment, and that part still is at the Enlightenment. But it's not a uh, part of me. It's a part uh, I left. I've left uh, left behind. That is then, that is really deep. And yeah. actually, my code name needs to change now. <laughs> I'm, I'm I'm just Red Solo Cup. I have no special meaning or anything. No, we still you yeah. up. I mean, you don't that's, need that's you cool. don't need a, don't need a special special code. You, you need uh, something that uh, describes but, but, a little of you. Yeah, the, but, the, but the thought that people put into it, that's, that's really unique. That's, that's awesome. Sometimes. Sometimes it is, it is uh, okay. I don't know. Uh, I don't know how many Luke Skywalker did I see <laughs> to, uh, yeah, Dart, Dart, XXX. <laughs> It's not always uh, so so deep. There is some people who who goes little deeper and deeper and deeper. Well, I'm sure that. Great question to ask. 
we, we are so to... glad you, you found the, the right way to the, to the pool <laughs> section. We are, we are so glad about that. And, and well, I have, a, for, uh, I have a friend, he says the same all the time. Is his, is his name Jorge Pedreo? <laughs> no, 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 but, but he's I'm the Asian Aspergillus. You know what though? If it if it keeps you in the game and it and it keeps you happy and going and and playing and having a good time, then I'm all for it, man. Switch yeah. switch to the resistance if that's what it takes. That, that's yeah, really and it sounds like you've got some really great teammates. So yeah, Absolutely. definitely mad props. That's for sure. Uh, and I'm sure you've seen some pretty crazy names when you go to these anomalies, and you you call yourself an anomaly holic. Yes. Can you describe what that means? Although I, I have a pretty good picture. And what's the craziest thing you've done to participate in an anomaly? Okay, uh, anomaly holic. I mean, there is an anomaly uh, series. I must go to at least one event, at least one. At least. At least. Uh, and uh, I was on uh, 13 Magnus in Zurich, a recursion in Berlin, uh, Interitus in Frankfurt, and Helios in Dublin. And for the next series, I will be in Bern on October 18. I don't know the name. I don't know how how see, how the watch is. That's another term. Watch holic anomaly watches uh, are important for me. Uh, then yes, uh, and crazy, crazy. Dublin, Dublin was crazy because uh, for Helios we had uh, three dates uh, for Europa, mm -hmm. for Europe, <laughs> and um, the three dates uh, were for uh, Dublin, uh, then Prague, and tomorrow, tomorrow, okay, or. Uh, on uh, on Saturday in in Munich, mm. and um, for Prague also for the for the second date, uh, I had a compromise with a fellow resistance in Paris. We took a little Paris, Paris Le Mont in blue, uh, and for um, for Munich, I had another compromise in. In Deutsch, in Germany, but not in Munich, and I cannot quit. Um, cannot quit the, that appointment. Then I went to to Dublin, um, but I'm not European, so I need. Theory, in theory, I need a visa. Then I I took contact with uh, the embassy in Bern. Um, they told me I need a visa. Then I read a little, uh, a little of uh, law, uh, Irish law. Wow. Uh, then I shouldn't need a visa. Then I took contact with uh, some ministerium of external relationships in in Dublin. Uh, they told me I didn't need a visa. And then I, I buy. I bought uh, the um, the billet, but uh, at the airport, uh, at the control, the the person from control didn't allow me to to abort, and the, there was so a big problem at the airport. I I was on security office. Um, oh my gosh! Then I was allowed to travel, but. Then there was uh, no no direct uh, no direct plane. Then I needed to go uh, through London, but I didn't know if I need a travel a travel transport transport visa for for London because that's UK. That's another rules. It was chaotic. I was in Dublin 
six hours later as planet. But it, it was a really, really cool weekend. It worth it. Oh, I, I know exactly where you don't need a visa or a special paper or anything. Colombia. And it's a shame you, it's a shame you didn't go to the Colombian to uh, anomaly. anomaly. I know. Come on. I know, but you know how how expensive is uh, I, that fly. I know, I know. And so uh, you are not a good a, anomaly holic. Yes, but for advantage, for advantage, and Bogota. I know Bogota, Dublin. It was first time on Ireland, first time on Dublin. Uh, really cool people. Irish people are very, very best from Europa. Mm. Great. Well, so uh, can you uh, uh, say that maybe that's your favorite anomaly, or or about all those anomalies that you had attend, which is your favorite one? Where did you got the best time? Oh, it's really difficult to say because there are there are so many experiences. But Dublin was uh, really, really awesome, and Berlin both <laughs> were really, really awesome. <clears throat> Berlin was so an amazing experience. I think all the people say that it was so, so, so many people. It was uh, so incredible. Then a uh, short also artifact artifact uh, game it was really really cool between okay. Dublin and Berlin in that case all right so getting out of the competitive aspect um, you know with communities and factions what do you think about cross faction events not just with anomalies but I'm a big, big fan from from cross-faction events, fielding or linking. Uh, I think they are necessary to break the ice through uh, also between between enemies, <laughs> because um, yeah, as Starkey said, uh, some people take that too seriously, and suddenly. Uh, there is not nice uh, treatment between people. I had um, the opportunity to talk with uh, with persons uh, who who heard some t some things like, uh, "Okay, if uh, if you capture that portal, I really uh, will kill you," or something. Some. Um, I was one time in in Bern, and then uh, the enlightened had a. So, it's not about the faction, but enlightened had an an event uh, about uh, a lake like farm, and I came and destroy all the things. And yes, the treatment was not very nice. I must say. Then I think those cross-faction events are really necessary to break this ice, uh, to to make the things a little better for to, for for both factions. And I really think, um, for example, that from from David Avidus, that was a, a really really cool event. It was. Another thing, it was new, it was fresh, it was not anymore anomaly, not anymore artifacts, and it was cross faction, and it worked. At l it worked. I must say, well between between both factions. How do you think you you can improve the the well, not you, but the game can be improved? It uh, also, I think. Uh, big mistake from Niantic, sorry, but a uh, big mistake is they make a closed game. Uh, I mean, at this at the start it was 
it it was it was made uh, until level eight uh, for level uh, level eight portals with level eight resonators, and then to be level eight wasn't uh, wasn't difficult anymore. At the stars, do you need uh, about two three months, maybe four months? To make uh, to make the way uh, to level eight, now you need uh, two weeks, maybe, and then uh, they make um, uh, badges and new levels. But we have already many players, uh, also many level sixteen players, and I think it will be the same. It will be the same, uh, and then what? Level 32 or something. So, I think in 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 the way from roll 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 game, it will be really cool. I mean, you could be develop some some abilities. For example, you could develop uh, the ability to attack. And then maybe you could uh, make more damage with uh, with level eight X and P, or uh, you need uh, less less X M to fire an an elect, or uh, you could develop uh, another abilities. Uh, I know I don't know a deployer, and then you could uh, you need less X M to deploy. Resonator, or you could deploy more mods. There are so many abilities. Uh, Seer ability. Then your your portal candidate didn't take too, too much time to be approved. Oh, I is. bet I bet Seer is your favorite batch. That's what you are saying. That Seer batch. I hate <laughs> that. I hate that. <laughs> I hate that. But I don't know. You are not like that. Eh? No, I'm. I'm not Sir. Oh, I'm definitely not. I better benefit from them. I made it uh, because uh, I needed my batch, but uh, I need. Uh, I wanted only bronze, only. Only to have it. And then uh, Sir, uh, but that's that's something that uh, that uh, has many t many things to do with with roll because there are so many styles to play. M uh, many people play for attacking. Many people play for fielding. Many people play. There is too many styles from from playing. And if you develop some some role play, then you could give some prize to the people for something they like to do. Because if you want to make L16 today, you need a guardian and recharger, a black. <laughs> there is also there is another ways and. I really at, at uh, also my respect for Damien Damien Morca Damien Morca <laughs> was, uh, he's the, he's the only one L16 without without a guardian and mm. but but he needed a uh, 100 million APs damn he did and, it. He did it. and if you if you don't have guardian guardian black uh, then you can forget you you achieved a uh, L16 in two in two years maybe, and it's it's something ridiculous. It's really really stop it. Uh, in that way, it will be better to to make a some role playing game. Uh, if you want to, if you like to attack portals. Uh, then attack portals. If you like to to deploy to make fields, then make that. It's some kind of a batch system, but uh, but 
it will be it would allow you to to enjoy to enjoy what you really enjoy. Speaking of, speaking of enjoying things, Gustavo, ready to take? Uh, let's go with two questions from the audience. Yes. All right. So the first one comes from uh, Spencer Ashby, and it's actually pretty good. Have you ever completely lost track of time during ingress play? Yes. There. Well, there is a post in ingress.com. It was a little bit a uh, night nice stalker. I was alone. I, I didn't plan it. Uh, I wanted to to capture two portals. Then I talk. Okay, uh, there is some portals in the distance. They're green. Okay, I make that. Uh, I started. I don't know in the night, and I came. I came home about uh, five five on the morning, and I was what? Uh, what? It was only a portal. It was sometimes. Uh, sometimes you you don't know how, but yes, it happens. It happens a lot, especially, especially yes, when you to get that, that milk and the groceries and, and the gas, and before you know it, it's two hours later. Yeah, or five hours later, or maybe <laughs> eight. I think um, we're running a little bit long on time tonight, so that's going to be all the all the Q and A we're going to take tonight. But uh, we will okay. answer these questions afterwards on on the G Plus post and in the comments of the YouTube. All right, let's move on. Uh, well, well, just like, oh, go ahead, Jorge. <laughs> Sorry, uh, as as we did with uh, Darky, we want to give you the sixty seconds to say some words with with them, and well, well, go ahead. My, my message. If you want, if you want. yeah, a message. My message is in the same way uh, from from Dark Gym, but uh, stay fair, people, because uh, it, it's not uh, not only insult or, or harassment, but uh, there is too many people with uh, dub, uh, double accounts with uh, uh, some un unfair ways to play, and that uh, that ruins the the. Beam. The form for 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 everybody. It's a game for everybody. Uh, everybody want to to enjoy. Then play fair. Play, play. Yeah, play fair. I don't know. How. That's a good message. That, that's yeah, a good good, good message. Thank you, Gustavo. Thank you for taking Thank the time you. being here. It's so late there. We will let you go to to sleep a little bit and yeah, I oh. must to study for an exam. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh goodness. Good luck. <laughs> Good luck. <laughs> thank you. Yeah, and thank, thank you so you. much for your authenticity um, this evening. Yeah. And yeah, thanks. Yeah. Thanks for sitting down and sharing those stories. It's uh, mm -hmm. I think for a lot of people out there that might be going through the same situation, it, it it's good for them to hear. You know that you've gone through it. You're you're through it, and uh, the support. That, that ingress can provide. That's that's important. Yeah. Right. Yeah, that that is great. Well, thank you everyone for watching. Join us next week. Happy hacking. And good night, everyone. Have a great week. Bye bye. bye. Oh, it's like a <laughs> hey, what happened? <laughs> Search for our technology there here. There you go. There you go. Yay. What do you know? What I didn't mention about my trip to Germany is they tried to get me to eat this pork knuckle. It was this giant, hairy, fatty, disgusting thing. 
Oh, oh. There's, only, there's only one guy. There's only one guy in the group that actually ate the pork chop. It had the hairs, literally the hairs of the face. Oh my god. Uh, well, you ate the, the you ate the musical cheese. That's enough. <laughs> no, no, no. I think the people in the car after that. It was good. 